with Megan McGinley Crow of Drakeit, who is a game designer who has come up with a game that's now published, right? Um, yeah, well, it will be. It's in it the process of being published. Can, tell us a little bit about it, Megan. Uh, I designed the game called Pack the Pack, and it is a inventory Tetris-like game. So it's sort of like Tetris, but you play it in front of you using dominoes. I see. Um, so it's custom-made dominoes with lots of really interesting shapes on them and you have to fit them all together in front of you. And the idea is that you're playing a group of adventurers that are all working together to go into a dungeon and you're like sort of like the Hobbit, right? And like you've gone in and you've, you've defeated the dragon, but now there's this amazing loot pile in front of you and you all have to grab all the stuff that you want to grab faster than the friend next to you um, so that you can get back to town and sell it for as much money as possible. So it's all about like really looking at the shape and what orientation should it go in front of you and where could it fit best so then when you draw a new shape, oh, maybe that screwed everything up and you have to reorganize and you're all racing against each other as you're doing that. So there's some thinking and oh, physicality yeah. involved. It's, a, it's really a whole body game. It uh, is. Oh, when I play, yeah. I found that I almost always stand up. <laughs> And and it really gets you moving, gets the blood pumping. So um, it's not you know it's necessarily a, a card game where you sit back and it's a lot of just relaxing. Right. It's very fast paced and it's a lot of thinking and so it's fast paced thinking um, and a lot of spatial reasoning too. So you're really trying to figure out how things fit together and do some really quick problem solving because the whole idea is if you think too long, then somebody else is going to beat you and get to the punch before you. Fun. Hmm. Tell me about your experience with games at, at growing up. It, it, it became a lifelong love? Yeah, it really is. It's something that my parents really instilled in me when I was little. They read to me every night and played games every weekend. Um, is sort of how I grew up and we didn't have a lot growing up, but we had decks of cards and we had backgammon sets and so that's what we did. Um, my, mom, my mom was a teacher and so Every summer, we, as one of the things to sort of keep me engaged summer long, we would have a game tournament and play one game all summer and keep score all summer long. So we had a backgammon tournament, we had a gin rummy tournament, um, and we'd play every day together and keep one giant notebook score to <laughs> see who could win. And this is when I was 10 years old, um, to just try to figure out, um, you know, not just a one-time thing, but really... A build that idea of strategy and not just the strategy of the game but the strategy of each other so um, i really give her a lot of credit for building my love of games you know when i think of game design i think of designing video games mm -hmm. where a lot of there's a lot of isolation involved your experience and the game that you've designed is is a lot of social interaction yeah. right it is it's yeah. the designing game even if you're designing a video game you can't necessarily do it in isolation if you do you're not going to design a good game you can have the perfect idea in your head, and even if you put all this time into it, it's still only in your head. The whole point of games is to get that idea and then get it in the hands of other people as quickly as possible so that they can play test it. Because every single time I brought it to a group to play test of strangers, not of my friends, but of people I didn't know, they found every hole with it that I didn't know, they found everything wrong with it that I hadn't even thought of, so that I could bring it back to the drawing board and fix it and then bring it back to another group, and the other group would find everything else wrong with it, and so I brought it back. So I've been doing that for over a year now, of just bringing it to groups and then coming back, and bring it to another group and coming back. And in my head it's the same game, but in front of me it's a completely different game. It started as a card game, and now it's dominoes. So it really has uh, changed a lot based on the feedback that I've been getting from different groups of people. Well, that's amazing, and you have some persistence in that. Oh yeah, you have to, if you really want. So. You have to make a game that you love because if you don't, you're going to give up immediately because you have to have that persistence and you have to really be able to um, break down that thing that you love inside and still maintain that thing you love because otherwise you're going to be like, ah, this is too hard. Um, nobody makes a living off making games, so that's the idea that it has to be something that you're doing for fun and bringing it down and remaking it and rebuilding it. Um, it has to be something that you really find passionate 